What is your dream? Warning, this video is made as an educational material and contains sexual health content. In this video, we will discuss in detail how the ovum produced in a woman's body and the sperm produced in a man's body fuse together during the fertilization process. The haploid ovum, which has not completed metaphase 2 of meiosis 2, that is surrounded by zona pellucida, rich in glycoproteins, which in turn is surrounded by corona radiata, bound by hyaluronic acid, approximately on the 14th day of the ovulation cycle, is released from the ovary and is drawn into the infundibulum of the fallopian tube and then moved into its wider region, the ampulla. It is in this region, the fertilization process, which is the fusion of ovum and sperm take place. During copulation, approximately 200 to 300 million sperm cells are released from the penis into the vagina. This process is called insemination. 1 million equals 10 lakh. Out of the total sperm cells released, only about 300 to 500 sperm cells reach the ampulla region. The remaining sperm cells are eliminated through various processes as they swim towards the ampulla. The migration of the female gamete cell, ovum, and the male gamete cell, sperm to the ampulla region, and they coming together closer for fertilization, is called approximation. Fertilization occurs only if both the ovum and sperm reach the ampulla at the same time. The ovum remains viable for about 12 to 24 hours after its release, while the sperm stays viable for about 24 to 48 hours after ejaculation. In a woman's menstrual cycle, the ovum is released from the ovary and reaches the ampulla around the 14th day. Only if sexual intercourse takes place during this period, the ovum will be fertilized by the sperm and pregnancy occurs. Therefore, not all copulation events lead to fertilization. If fertilization does not occur, both the ovum and sperm disintegrate within the woman's body. After reaching the fertilization site, the sperm cell undergoes a series of biochemical processes and physiological modifications caused by secretions in that region. These changes remove sterols and seminal plasma proteins from the head of the sperm cell. Sterols and seminal plasma proteins help in maintaining the structure of the sperm. Their removal enhances the motility of the sperm cell. These changes that take place in sperm is known as capacitation. Capacitation is considered the final step in the maturation of the sperm cell. After capacitation is complete, the sperm cell releases the enzyme hyaluronidase. This enzyme acts on the corona radiata, which is bound by hyaluronic acid and creates gaps between the granulosa cells. Because of this event, and along with the physical force gained from its hyperactivated motility, the sperm cell penetrates the corona radiata and moves towards the zona pellucida. When the sperm cell reaches the zona pellucida, its binding proteins attach specifically and only to the ZP3 receptors present on the zona pellucida. Following this fusion, the sperm cell releases proteolytic enzymes such as acrosin. These enzymes act on the zona pellucida, creating pores in the layer. Through one of these pores, only a single sperm cell penetrates and reaches the vitaline membrane of the ovum. Next, the cell membranes of both the sperm cell and the ovum fuse, allowing the nucleus of the sperm to be released into the cytoplasm of the ovum. The mitochondria, tail, and other leftover parts of the sperm cell remain outside the ovum and eventually disintegrate.
This process triggers the cortical granules present in the cytoplasm of the ovum. These granules fuse with the vitaline membrane and release few enzymes into the paravitaline space. These enzymes increase the size of the paravitaline space and harden the zona pellucida layer. After these changes have taken place, the vitaline membrane and zona pellucida together is referred to as the fertilization membrane. This fertilization membrane prevents polysper me. The entry of multiple sperm cells into the ovum, which could lead to abnormal chromosomal sets and developmental defects. Following these events, the secondary oocyte, which had not yet completed metaphase two of meiosis II thus far, now completes the division and produces two haploid daughter cells. One of these cells becomes a polar body, undergoes degeneration, and disintegrates. The remaining cell containing 23 chromosomes is the female germ cell and is called udid. It fuses with the nucleus of the sperm cell and forms a diploid zygote with 46 chromosomes. The process where the nuclei of the sperm and ovum unite is referred to as syngamy. The sex of the zygote whether it will develop into a male or female, is determined during syngamy. This is determined by one pair of sex chromosomes among the 23 pairs of chromosomes that had formed after syngamy. Of the one pair of sex chromosomes, one is contributed by male and the other by the female. A woman's ovum always carries an X-type sex chromosome. However, about 52% of a man's sperm cells carry X-type sex chromosome, and about 48% of a man's sperm cells carry Y-type sex chromosome. If a sperm with a Y-type sex chromosome fertilizes the ovum, the resulting XY sex chromosome combination forms a male zygote. If a sperm with an X-type sex chromosome fertilizes the ovum, the resulting XX sex chromosome combination forms a female zygote. If you find this video to be useful, please do not forget to like, comment, and share. Thank you. You have to excel in the education.